Okay, so um, we're going to talk about product of square roots. Um, so when I say radicals, I'm usually referring to square roots because remember that sign in a rat in a square root problem is called the radical. Okay, so this is like radical something. We'll call it M times another radical of something else. So here's the, here's the rule. This is called the product rule for square roots. When you multiply the square root of something times the square root of something else, then you can combine that into one big radical, the square root of that product. So this is the square root of M times N inside the box, okay? Or inside the radical. So square root of five times the square root of two would be the square root of 10, right? Um, or here's something else that's kind of exciting. Let's see here. Square root of six, which you can't take the square root of. Wait, let's not do that. Wait. Um, let's do the square root of 12 times the square root of three equals what? No. Uh, uh, square root of 36. Square root of 36, which, hey, hey, that is 6. Okay. So we can't take the square root of three, 12, but we can't take the square, and we can't take the square root of 3, correct? But when you multiply those two together, that's something that you the square the root. Does it sound like she said turdies? Uh, hey, speaking of turdies, um, we wanted to re emphasize the bathroom announcement <laughs> that, uh, um, yeah, so did you guys hear that announcement yesterday? That, um, so there's, there's some boys specifically. And I know it's not any of you guys because you are responsible peers. And not that I know that, but um, so yeah, don't pee in toilets that are marked off. They're marked off for a reason and they're not cleaned as well. So it's really bad. And just aim, you know, just got to be better at aiming. It's not that difficult. Um, but again, yeah, you guys. I trust that you're good aimers. Um, admit, admit. Okay, so if you're just joining us, pee responsibly in the bathroom. Yeah, there's, there's boys that are just learning the process apparently. So, Okay, so back to uh, multiplying radicals, a little different than that. Okay, so um, uh, back to this. So this is, this is a cool deal. So when you multiply two radicals, you can multiply what's ever underneath the radicals into one big radical, okay? But more importantly, you can go backwards. So the square root of m times n equals the square root of m times the square root of n. And I'll tell you why this is important in a minute here, okay? But um, let's see here. Uh, well, I'll tell you right now. So the square root of 50, what's the square root of 50? Well, you could break that up into two different radicals that are multiplied to get 50. So what multiplies to get 50? Five and 10, what else? 25 and two. 25 and two. Okay, so now I'm gonna look at 25 and two. So I'm gonna do like a little factor tree. Remember doing the factor tree with normal numbers? Trying to find the primes? You're not trying to find the primes, but here's what you're doing. 
So this is the square root of 25 times the square root of two. So far, so good. Okay, now what's the square root of 25? That's just five. So this is just five times the square root of two. Um, this is a very important process called simplifying a radical. Now here's the deal. If there are any squares, perfect squares, remember perfect squares are like one, four, nine, 16, 25, 36, 49, all those guys. If there are any perfect squares hiding out in there, it's your job to go in there to pull them out, okay? Um, and when they come out, their true identity is revealed. So they're, they're hidden in here as their square form, but when you take them out, it's their real form. You know, five is not the square root of 25. I mean, it is, but this is the simpler way to tell, to, to call five, it's five, all right? Um, so we're gonna be doing a lot of these, but um, it doesn't seem like we're making it simpler, but we are, we're, we're just getting rid of any squares that are in there. So if there's any squares that can be multiplied into what's ever underneath the radical, then you need to take it out, okay? And the best way to do it, I think, is like with this factor tree. So you're not looking for what goes into 50. You are, but specifically, you're looking for what perfect squares go into 50, okay? So I could have done square root of five times the square root of 10, but then I would have hit a dead end, right? Because you can't take the square root of five and you can't take the square root of 10. Okay, so look for any perfect square. So there's a magic question. You know, when you were reducing fractions, the magic question is, what can you take out of both the top and the bottom, right? That's how you reduce a fraction. This works similarly. Uh, there's a magic question. What can you take out? What perfect square can you take out of 50 or whatever is inside the radical? <clears throat> All right, let's try uh, another example. Let's try the square root of 200. So you have to ask yourself, what perfect square goes into 200? Well, there's several. So maybe, yeah, we'll try it a couple different ways. But what do you think? Well, four can go in. Four can go in there and 25. Well, how many times does four go in there? And that goes in like 50 times, right? Yeah. So if I did that, so you can take a square root of four out and a square root of 50. Um, but look, what's square root of four? That's two, right? So this is two, but what's the square root of 50? Well, that was the square root of 25 times the square root of two. The square root of 25 is just five. So you have two times five times the square root of two, right? What's two times five? So you have 10 radical two, okay? Um, so just like reducing fractions, sometimes you can keep going. After you reduce it a little bit, you can keep going and reduce it more. You remember doing that with reducing fractions? Well, but there is a way to avoid that with reducing fractions. How do you avoid multiple steps when you're reducing fractions? So how do you reduce, um, what is it? What's a good one? How do you reduce 45 sixtieths? Yeah. yeah, so you can just start dividing like 45 and 60, you can take a five out of that. And you get what you get like 15 and, and 12. And then, no, I did that wrong. Take a five out of that, and you get a nine and a 12. And then, oh, hey, nine and 12, you can take a three out of that. Um, but the, the better thing to do is to look for the biggest number that can go into both of them. Well, over here, what is the biggest square that goes into 200? I kept going here. Yes, 100. We'll 
those perfect squares keep going on and on. But if I looked for the biggest square that goes into this, what's the square root of 100? So 10 radical 2. Look at that. Same answer, one step. Okay. So, um, yes, you're looking for squares that go in there. But more specifically, you have to ask yourself, write this magic question down. What is the biggest square that goes into, into whatever you're talking about? What is the biggest square that goes into blah, blah, blah? Okay, whatever's underneath your ass. So you're looking for the biggest square. If you can find it, then you have one step. If you don't find it, that's okay. If you find a smaller square, that's okay. You just have to do it in a couple steps. But every step you add, the more confusion it adds and the more potential mistakes it makes, right? Okay, so let's uh, try another one. See if you guys can do this. Um, those of you joining us at home, uh, you can earn a flak attack coupon if you want. So let's see if you can give me, uh, if you can reduce this radical or simplify this radical. So I'm going to make some space here. Up at the top, I'm doing, what is the square root of 108? Well, 108 isn't on the list, right? So, um, but you can simplify it. So, what do you do? So, if you guys have it, you can text it. It's, it's hard to text it. Actually, if you hit Alt-V, I think it's Alt V on your keyboard. It does a little radical sign. Let's test it here. I'm going to try testing Alt V. Yes. Okay, so Alt V, at least on a Mac, it could be on a PC as well. Alt V gives you a square root sign. Got an answer? Hold on one second. Let me. Good job. Hold on to that. Anyone else have it? Or you can just spell it out too if you're at home and just write the word radical or, or square root of. So you're on the right track. So you took a, you take a two out of it, then you're stuck with that two and then 54, 54 is not a square, but I bet you there's some stuff in 54 or not 54. Yeah, 54. So kind of a process. Okay. All right, let's see. Where is it? Okay, that's right so far. So that's one of those that you can keep going because 12, what's in 12? Okay, 
Yeah, so fifty-four. So that. So you're looking. So you can't just see what goes into it. You have to look for a square. So you have to take one of these guys out. So see if one. See how two isn't in here or fifty-four isn't in here. So you have to pick one of these numbers first. Okay. And if you can figure out the biggest one, it's one step. But you don't have to. You can just figure out at least one number that goes into there. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so same thing here. You get them like the same way um, where you, it wasn't a 54, but no, let's see. Here. Uh, so it's close, but not quite. All right. Um, did you get it? That's the what you can take out of it, or what happens when you can take out of it. That's right. All right, anyone else? Okay. All right, I got some answers here. Yeah, that's the right hope. Micah, not sure what you're doing. Okay, all right, let's uh, give some points out here. All right, so um, you can do this in a couple different ways. Uh, uh, why don't you tell us what you did, and then we'll fin I'll help you finish it. Because you did it right, and then I'm going to do it a different way. So what did you do first? Yeah, so the square root of 54 times the square root of 2. Okay. Yeah, so then you got square root of uh, 27 times the square root of 2. Okay. So, so square root of 9 times the square root of 3. Okay. So then we've got, what, let's see, this is it's a lot, but we got it. So square root of 9 is 3, right? So square root of nine is three, and then you have this radical three times radical two times radical two, right? Well, what's radical two times radical two? Yeah, which is two. So remember when you multiply radical by itself, it cancels. So radical elephant times radical elephant is elephant. But you can do the math if you want, and then go back to where you were. Um, but what Riona did is she did three times the square root of 12, right? Because when you multiply all those together, you get 12. But look, there's a square hidden inside of 12. What square goes into 12? Square root of four, right? Well, what's the square root of four? Two. So that's three times two times radical three. Well, three times two is six. So this went from here to here. So let's try it different, a different way. So square root of 108. What is the biggest square that goes into 108, Nathan? 36. 36. So this is the square root of 36 times the square root of 3. What's the square root of 36? 6. So that took a little bit less space, didn't it? Okay, so it's worth it. Because this is confusing. I'm like, okay, what do you do here? So this is where Riona got in a train wreck, basically. She was like, I don't know what to do here. Now I'm confusing myself. And so this is what is going to happen to you. Um, probably if you don't think of the biggest perfect square that goes in there. 
This makes it so much easier, doesn't it? If you can think of it, the trick is thinking of it. Well, you can use these all day long. These are the perfect squares. You're just looking for these numbers. You have your calculator. So you can say, okay, does four go in? Well, I'm gonna start big. So it's, since it's 108, you know that none of these are gonna divide into 108, right? So the, the biggest one that can go into it is, is halfway, which is 54, okay? So let's start at there. Well, that's not gonna go in. Let's see if 36 goes in, just divide it on the calculator. No remainder or no decimal, you're good. So it does. Um, so look for the biggest square that goes into that. Now, this is where most people get confused though. Like if you can remember that question, that's great. But then what do you do with it? So just think of that factor tree. And the whole point is to take a perfect square out and simplify it. Okay, so this is the square root of 36, which can be written six. Whenever you can write a number in its nice natural form, literally natural form, then do it, okay? That six was hiding up in there with a mask. That mask was the, his square root his perfect square or square root form, okay? I could call myself square root of Mr. Flack squared if I wanted to, but that seems silly. I'm just gonna call myself Mr. Flack. But so six was calling himself square root of 36 up here. No, find him, take him out and simplify him. Oh, that sounds so brutal, doesn't it? Simplify him. I don't even know what that means, but it sounds brutal. Okay, um, so that is, that's it for lesson 63. Um, at the end of lesson 63, they do this, hey, by the way, you should know these decimals type of thing. Well, um, when you see 0.3 repeating, what, what fraction is that? One third. One third. What about uh, 0.1 repeating? Anyone know what point one repeating is? One ninth. It is one ninth. Yeah, so one ninth is remember one divided by nine. Blip, blip, blip. Okay, so one ninth is point one repeating. Okay, what about one six? Anyone know this one? This is actually an easy one to remember. You know what repeating decimal that is? Nope. So let's just divide it. How many times does six go into 10? One. How many times does it go into 40? Six times. How many times does it go into 40? So it's 0.16 repeating. Um, remember back in kindergarten when you're like, Oh, I know how to write that as a decimal, mommy. It's 0.34. Remember doing that when you were kids? We were so dumb when we were kids, weren't we? Okay, so no, that's not, but it does work here with 1.6, um, 0 0.16 repeating. That actually, that's, that's what 1.6 is, okay? Um, let's see, you guys know this one, 0.6 repeating, what's that? You know? Well, this looks like twice as much as that. Two thirds, that's right. So 0.6 repeating is two thirds. So you need to be able to recognize these um, as, uh, as fractions and decimals, be able to convert without having to think and have a weird look on your face, okay? So don't forget these nice handy conversions there. Now, eventually you will learn how to convert a repeating decimal to a fraction. Because you know how to convert a fraction to a decimal. It's pretty easy, you just divide. But going from a repeating decimal to a fraction, 
unless you know it already, it's there's not an easy process, but it's actually fun. I don't think Algebra 2, this book does it. The old Algebra 2 book did it, but apparently it's not a skill that they are really big on these days that, that they feel like you need. All right, lesson 64. Okay, we are gonna talk about domain. Domain is just uh, the stuff you put in the nuggetizer, okay? It's the stuff that you put in the machine. And so here's the ingredients. Here's what, you, what will not break the machine. Here's what you had to work with, okay? So um, if we're talking about, uh, they do this weird, weird problem. How many eggs can you buy for 25 cents? If eggs cost 10 cents each, how many eggs can you buy? Two and a half. Well, don't buy a half an egg. That's going to be messy. So basically, uh, you've got so you've got a set of numbers. You got a domain. You can buy zero, you can buy one, or you can buy two. So how many eggs can you buy for 25 cents? The answer is not two and a half. The answer is the set zero, one, or two. So these are uh, this, these are the domain. This is the domain, okay? So this is what you have to work with. All right, now, uh, this applies to inequalities more than anything for now. Here's example one, x is greater than two. How do you graph that again? How do you graph x is greater than two? Most of you got this right on your test. Nathan knows, anyone else? How do you graph X is greater than two? Eliana? Since you add the two. Okay, so I'm gonna put a two there. Protect it, and then which? And you shade it to the right. Okay, so you shade to the right, good job. Okay, so this is, this domain, like what numbers are we dealing with? What is this set of numbers there? Two to infinity. Two to infinity. So it's not just three and four and five, but it's also everything in between two, three, four, and five, right? Okay, so what do we call that set of numbers? Real numbers. So I thought you were going to say rational numbers, but there's also irrational numbers because look at 3.14 ish pi is in there somewhere. It's on the number line. It just has a crazy, ridiculous decimal, but it's still a number. It's a real number. So the domain is real numbers. So I'm going to put that just in case you forgot the alien R symbol. But this is the rate real number set. Okay. Now, if I wanted to say x is greater than two, my domain is integers, then how would I graph that? <laughs> I don't know how to count, apparently. I'm gonna change these. I guess not. Maybe one, two, one, two. How would I graph this? If the domain is just the integers, how would I graph this? Okay, well, I could put an open circle on the two, but I don't want to shade because I don't want the numbers in between two and three, right? Because what are the integers? Integers are all the negative whole numbers and positive whole numbers, right? So here's how I graph it.
Does that make sense? Yeah. And then you just keep going. So I'm like, well, do you do a line and then put circle? No, that doesn't make sense. Let's see. Well, no, it's, it's uh, this is kind of telling you what it's not. It's sometimes it's easier to say what it's not, but this is telling you what it is. It's not two because it has to be greater than two, but the integers, so here's a good way to ask this question. What integers are greater than two? Well, three, four, five, and so on, okay? So far, so good? Okay, so let's try to confuse you. I don't know if we can, but I want to try to confuse you. So here's example two, ready? X, this symbol, three, by the way, D is integers. So see if you can graph that. Because some of your X's and Y's Sorry. Look, look the same. But not that you have messy handwriting, it's just small and petite. Right. So this, if that line wasn't through it, then yep, it would be right. But this is not that. So now you have to get rid of that. And then it's everything. All the, yeah, it's just off. Yep. <laughs> you get it? Did I already look? Okay. Good job. Good? Good job. All right, so um, first things first, let's get it out of this negated inequality form. If it's not greater than or equal to, the only thing it can be is less than. Okay, and if we're dealing with integers, then we need these guys. Okay, and it's nice to include at least one negative number when you draw your number line. That way we know it's going into the negatives as well. Um, now, is it wrong to do this? No. I mean, that just means don't include that. But you, you don't need that symbol because it's, you don't have stuff coming right up there trying to touch three. Okay? So um, you don't need that. I'm not going to mark it wrong. I'm just going to snicker to myself just a little bit if I see that. Okay? Because you don't really need it. All right. Okay, uh, let's uh, try a couple more. See if I can stump you. Here's example three. So the domain, let's say positive integers. Positive. Positive integers see if you can graph that positive integers is zero positive no okay is zero positive or negative or is it just zero it's just zero zero has its own category good question yeah There are some fascinating numbers. Zero is one of them. Crazy qualities. Something so simple, yet so complex. Why is zero even a number? 
It's, because it represents a quantity. It represents a quantity of nothing. You have to say, well, that is a, a possible answer. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you raise your hand, then you're probably wrong. Are there any positive integers that are less than negative one? No. So, guess what symbol I'm going to write? Anyone know? For a flak attack? Anyone know what symbol I'm going to write as my answer? You can write a symbol. Indeterminate. No. Nope. Right, so how do I re represent my? So this is us representing a set of solutions, just like this is a oh, set of solutions. It's the blank little brackets that. Yep. What is that called? Uh, empty brackets. Null. Yeah, null set <laughs> or empty set. Good job. Any answers on chat? No. So. Let's see here, Nathan, Audrey. Okay, so empty set or null set. So I could I could write these two, one of these two symbols. Okay, uh, it doesn't exist. What about um, here's another one, example five. X is greater than or equal to negative five. The domain is positive integers. Okay, so remember the question you have to ask yourself, what positive integers are greater than negative five? Okay, so give me a, a graph of your solutions. Sometimes you can get away with listing the members of your solution set. But sometimes you have to use a graph. Like for example, you can't use a, a set of numbers here, right? You can't say 2.0000000000 infinity one, 2.0000000 infinity zeros two, you can't do that. Nathan? Um, I just, you, um, I could, I just, I don't know. <laughs> I'm a bit confused because it's equal to negative five. So. Yeah. Yeah, so what positive integers are greater than or equal to negative five? Eliana? Would you, oh, you are, you are not done. Oh, I thought you had a question. I, I, I just, Okay, what'd you get? Um, no, you just not do the negative five. But it's just, it's just the positive integers. I know, I mean, which num? so you're saying which numbers are, which positive numbers are greater than or equal to negative five? Well, still not, right? Okay, so this applies to not only part of the symbol, but the whole symbol. So which positive integers are great are equal to negative five? Well, none. But which positive integers are greater than negative five? One, two, three, and all the way up, right? Good. All right. Um, so real quick, uh, let's do just the, the second half of this lesson is just solving for an inequality. So you can solve an inequality almost exactly the same way you solve an equality or an equation, okay? So the same rules apply. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. If you add something to one side, you add something to the other, okay? Because if you think about your balance scale, if X is greater than some, the other side, it's going to look like this, right? What happens if you add five pounds to this side and five pounds to this side? What's going to happen? It's still going to maintain that same truth that 
x is greater than this side, okay? The same thing, if you take off five pounds from each side, it may do this for a second, but it's still gonna balance out to whatever it was, okay? So um, let's do, uh, so we got this additive property of equality, which we already know, additive prop of equality, which is this, if A equals B, then A plus C equals B plus C. We just add the same thing to both sides. Additive property equality, we could really say that's subtraction two because you're just adding a negative number. So you could subtract C from both sides and it doesn't matter. But now here's the additive property of inequalities. Okay, so if A is greater than B, then A plus C is still greater than B plus C. Okay, even if that C was a negative, um, if you subtract the same thing from both sides, you still have that relationship where the left side is greater than the left right side. So that means we can solve inequalities. So x plus two is less than zero. I'm gonna graph this. Well, in order to graph it, we need x is x by itself. So how do you get x by itself? Subtract two. Subtract two. Whatever you do to one side of the inequality, do to the other, right? So x is less than negative two. Let's graph it. Well. If they don't give you a domain, like we did on the previous board, what's the domain? Everything, real numbers. So you can assume that there's your negative two, open circle, shade to the left, okay? So if they don't give you a domain, assume that it is all real numbers, okay? Let's do one more and then we'll call it a day. So here is example actually seven because it's still part of that lesson. I want to graph x minus three is greater than or equal to negative five. Oh, by the way, domain equals integers. Okay, so see if you can graph that. So you have to solve the inequality first and then graph it according to the rules of the domain. right if the domain was real numbers. So good job. Okay, so this is not just positive integers. It's all integers. Yep. Get it? Yeah. All right, so uh, let's solve it. I'm just going to add three to both to both sides. So then I get x is still greater than or equal to negative two, right? I just added three to both sides. I got x by itself. So now I'm just dealing with integers. So here's negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. I do wanna include, and you might wanna include one below it too, just to tell me that I'm not including negative three. But since it's greater than or equal to, I'm going to put a dot on negative two. If it was just greater than, then I would start at negative one, right? 
All right, you guys feel okay about this? Okay, awesome. Black math! Give me some math and I'll give you some flash!